Don here in Florida. Today we're going to try to adapt this Bridgeport style power feed onto this Millwright vertical mill back here. Okay, so why we need to make an adapter, if you look at this plate here, if you were to put this on, one, it would be nice for, for installing the drive, but it sticks up above the level of the bed and there's really no place to mate it here. Um, one of the issues, one of the issues we run into here is this is raised right here, so it pushes this part away from the back of the bed here. So the idea would be to make an adapter that goes down over this shaft here and, you know, something like this, go down like that if it was flat and then, and then this would come up onto it and bolt on like this. So basically we're trying to avoid this here. Now you can't just inset your piece down in here because if you look right here, this casting is raised up right here. There's a there's an Allen screw here and it's just not flat. You wouldn't have a good mating surface down in here. So what we need to do, and this is why this piece was too small, is we mean, need to make a piece that sits up onto this groove because this is a flat surface right here and then inset slightly. So basically we need a piece that's going to be purchasing off this point, not off the casting itself. So this is why we're looking to make something that we can that we can put down on there that this can come up onto, slide into, and screw onto, sticking out maybe half an inch or so. Now, when you stick it out that far, you can see that you have very little clearance from where the gear would be. Let me get the gear. You have very little clearance from where the gear would be here, okay, to the handle. The handle would stick out here. So therefore, what we need to do is we need to make an extension that will come out past this point here, out to maybe that far, to allow us to put our handle back on there. The first part I want to make is going to be the standoff for the drive itself. Now, what we want to do is have a standoff that this can bolt into and it can bolt into the mill. You have to purchase against that machine boss we were talking about. So what we have is the perfect size part right here. We use this to get our diameter and uh, go from there. So now we should have close to a perfect outer diameter here and also our hole point right here. So what we'll do is we'll go on the drill press, we'll drill our primary center hole here so that we can get onto this in the lathe, then we'll cut it out and uh, put it on the lathe and, and turn it to the right diameter. So let's get on that right now. go deeper that and test it over the shaft okay I switched out the belt we're running at approximately 400 surface feet per minute now for aluminum so let's get this hacked out
Okay, so here we are. That's a plug we made. So see how that fits. Seems to fit in there all right. Okay, back over here on the bench, and we were kind of trying to decide what to do as far as lining this up with this or, or mating this together, uh, getting it centered on the drive head. So uh, my original thought was to just make a, a, a bushing, put it through there, center it, come around and use centering punches to uh, find the hole marks that I want. And then I got to thinking, you know what? If I'm gonna go through all that trouble, why don't I just go ahead and mount this on the mill and then I can center it right on the mill. But that backs me up to where I need this bushing again to line this up on the shaft. But this shaft size is 11 16 so I need a 5 8. So we got some 10 18, uh, turn it to the, what is it, not 0.9, 44 external diameter yeah 944 external diameter and the 5 8 internal di diameter so we're, so we're gonna go ahead and get on the monarch over there and go ahead and turn it okay so I just mic'd the sleeve and it's at uh, 0.9 45 and a half so I'm gonna shoot for 946 uh, this is exactly one inch, so we need to take out uh, 54 thousandths, so let's go for it. And that's why the Monarch spoils me. One shot pass and we hit it right on the ball. So. Okay, we're about half a thousandths out, that's what I left, so we're gonna polish that down. Perfect. All right, so I took and uh, got the, the bushing all deburred and ready to go. It, it fits beautifully into the uh, head here it's just uh it's it's a perfect perfect fit so uh leaving it about a half a thousandth to a thousandth out and then polishing it in just brought it up perfect it fits nicely over the shaft so we're good to go there the next thing we got to do is get the unit aligned and marked so that we can fasten it all on here now yeah, that should hold that nice and square while i'm doing the first one and i'm gonna uh, drill and tap out the first one and then come back to the remainders so that everything stays lined up all right so there's our mark I'm gonna go go ahead and drill that and then bring it back mark the casting and then drill and tap the casting okay we're back and we're gonna get this all lined up to make our first hole for the casting. So I need to get this all lined up first. All right, so casting hole should be right about there. Let me see if I can get a good indent on that. There we go. Take that off and see what we got.
And yeah, I can see it perfectly from down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill that and tap that, and then we'll we we will set the uh, plate in place, screw it down, and then we'll do the other two. All right, let's see how this goes on there. See if we can get that oh, lined right up. Very nice. Okay, now that I have the plate all in place and I have this Allen head sticking out, I can use this as a dowel to align everything. So I should be able to just bring this up here and wiggle it into place, which it is. Okay. And I'm going to have a dowel here and here and up here and then I'll have a locking screw here and here. So let's go ahead and mark these. And get some centers in there. There we go. down so aside from being dowels they're also holding the plate solid to the machine so drill straight through there we go and then number two there we go and then we'll jump that whole size up to number seven which is also going to be the threading size for the next set going straight into here. One, two, and then we should be able to go straight into threading. All right, let's see if these fit. There's one, get everything lined up for now. So I'm gonna try the head. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and try this out now. We've got our three dowel points here. I went ahead and counterboard the back of the housing here to match the size of the dowel head. So let's make sure everything fits up right here. And of course I, I have my sleeve in the middle there, so I'm not just dropping this on there. Oh, there she goes, just like that. So those dowels, I can't even move it back and forth hardly. Those dowels should hold it exactly where I want it. So at this point, I should be able to mark where I want my locking bolts and drill for those and tap those out. So let's go ahead and do that. Two. There we go. All right. You know what, I'm gonna loosen those up in case I need some space on the back side there. There we go. Let's see if these fit. Oh yeah, two Allen bolts that hold it in place. And then we've got our dowels at these points here. And they're also, those dowels also act as the, they're not really dowels, they're Allen heads, but they're acting as dowels, but they're also holding this backing plate in place as well. So next thing we need to do is, uh, we're gonna have to extend that shaft. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can get the shaft out. Um, I already took the, loosen that up and took the key out and take the dial off. So it looks like what we have here is a nut with a Allen screw in it. So we're going to take that out, take that Allen screw out, put that back in before I lose it. I don't want to lose that, do I? And then uh, what do we have in here? That's the bearing. 
bearing looks good. Surprised there wasn't a washer right there. Let's get this off and see what happens. There we go. <clears throat> that off of there. All right. I guess technically I didn't need to take that nut off, did I? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and drill out the end of this shaft and uh, tap it for 3 8 coarse. So let's get that done. All right, that should be uh, deep enough to get some tapping done. So the shaft we have to mate into is two and three quarters. We're gonna add another three quarters. So we're gonna be three and a half right to there. Not bad finish. There we go. So what I did off camera was I finished up that uh, that piece, I, I, I got it out, it threaded nicely, got it out, I polished it up, deburred it. So this is our extension, it's ready to, to go for the most part. The key for this gear drive here, this brass gear drive, is not an eighth inch. I realized I was going to have to cut down my key stock. So I just, what I decided to do was go with an eighth inch keyway in the shaft here. And what I'm gonna do is when I screw this in, I'm, instead of pinning this, I'm gonna run the, the key across the two shafts. So I have to have a keyway across the two shafts, which will in fact lock them together when this comes down over it. But this was not an eighth inch. This was uh, well, 0.115. So I had to cut the key itself so that it would fit in here easily. So we have a, a 0.115 here to 1 8th. So when we cut the shaft, this will be 1 8th. The other thing we have to do is we, had, we have to put a woodruff uh, key into this shaft because that's what holds the handle in place. And, and this is much wider. And we're going to do both these operations the same way that I I did this key. We're going to use the mill attachment that I made for the uh, Atlas lathe and do all that since I have the, have the mill right torn down. Technically I could probably do it on the y-axis but I don't have enough room to get the entire shaft across there because like I said I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go across the two shafts here to here and that other shaft is what three feet long. Okay. And there we go. So let's see how this works. And I'm going to put a little bit of lube on there right now. Hopefully that'll be all the lube I need. Very nice indeed. There. Lock the carriage. And uh, put a little bit of lube on there. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the shaft and then I'm gonna insert the key and measure. So the difference between where I'm supposed to be and where I'm at is what I need to take out. So right now it's looking about 16,000. Let's uh, go for our 16 and see where we're at. Go ahead and start assembly again. 
probably that shaft got hit at the end or something. I, this sometimes kind of rough. So from this angle, I've got that nut lined up. All right, all tight. Let's see if we can get the uh, shaft to go all the way the rest of the way through. Get the collar. I cleaned this up a little bit before, so it should be okay. And then our bearing. This end takes the, the uh, play out, so we have to take as much play out as we can, otherwise those, that brass gear won't mesh into the pinion gear properly. It'll try to pop in and out, so we want to try to make that as tight as possible. Brass gear on the other end. We'll get to that here in a couple minutes. Okay. I don't know if anybody noticed when I was uh, cutting the the keyways for the Woodruff keys, I kept them in line like this so the handles line up properly. Lubricant right there. We're going to take our nice bushing here. We're going to set that in and then that should all line up nicely now. There we go, just had to go square. And then we'll get our screws. There we go, just like that. You can see where that that bushing landed right on, right near the original keyway right there. So we're just gonna run it down on there, see where it's sitting. Just like that, and it facing out here. That's why I made that uh, spacer, that bushing, a little longer. That's over too. And so I wouldn't have to use a ton of shims. Alright, All right, seems to engage. Aside from locking this with the set screw here, that end cap, I believe, is going to help it. So I've got my key in here, so let's get the handle on. And then this end cap. And I just turned that up on the lathe in about a minute and a half. That was very easy to do. And before I put any tightness on that, I'm going to tighten up the handle onto the key itself. That's always bothered me that that loosens up. I've changed the set screw a few times and I've tried using medium Loctite, but uh, nothing really does it. So. so let's go ahead and plug this in and see what happens. It was on. I... There we go. Yeah, you can, you can see that shaft moving up and down. Oh my goodness. It was like power steering and power brakes. I hope you enjoyed what I did on this to all my MVN buddies. Uh, have a good one. And from Florida, Don out.